So a few quick updates in uh, Ridgewood, the career development team had a, uh, a banner week with uh, or banner month with a bunch of closings, new listings, some under contracts and some new folks joining the program. So that's great news. Um, and in terms of a great class we have upcoming in the New Jersey land development class, we moved on from 101 to 102 with Bruce Elia. Is Bruce on? Um, Elizabeth, I should have asked you that one. Are you on, Bruce? Not Bruce on today. On. We don't need him as long as he's there for the class. We don't care. Uh, moving over to Valley, we had a great CE class with over 50 agents in attendance. And upcoming, we have a dual career night. We're trying to do more and more of that um, with some great panelists there. We're going to be serving uh, some wine and beer uh, sponsored by a home inspection company. So there's that. Um, over in Town of Fly, Town Life, uh, Stacey Esser continues to kill it. She has a new uh, cooperating exclusive in the $2 million range and had a couple good closings. Wayne Adler and Bobby Johnson had million dollar plus closings. Um, they represented both the seller and the buyer on that. And we have our answer to Tony Robbins, uh, David Radney, uh, teaching a class on the 31st in uh, in Tenafly, but I believe that's open to all the market centers. So if you want to uh, join, please uh, join us in Tenafly on the 31st. Um, pay score is picking up. Um, we've had 19 uh, new agents enrolled in K score. Um, not sure if everybody's familiar with that is. Josue, are you on? Do you want to talk a little bit about K score? Someday I'm going to find out who's on before I try to throw it to people who aren't here. But are you here, Josue? Anybody want to talk about K-Score? Save me. Elizabeth told me I had to be more prepared for these meetings, and I'm not doing a good job. Um, all right, in terms of our new partner, Carnegie Mortgage Partners, we had six agents in City Views refer this week. So thank you to Marav, Michael, Christine, Flory, Vicky, and Brianna. Um, and we have a mastermind coming up with our one and only broker, Farhan, on the 31st at 11. Um, we have a new group that's joining uh, the Rutherford team, uh, P&G Realty. Uh, the, uh, the Papa family is traveling in Europe, from what I understand, so they're not on the call today, but welcome. Um, that Kevin has worked closely with, uh, with Guido and Phil and Steven to bring that, that group on board. It's a new office in, in Sea Caucus. Um, and then I believe we do have Joyce to talk about this cool new uh, 201 on 21 contest that we have coming up. Are you on, Joyce? I am over. Nope, I'm here. I just had to Very unmute good. myself. <laughs> um, Hi, our, amazing, our amazing tech trainer, Amanda, is working along with uh, the national initiative to celebrate the first day of February by uh, encouraging our agents to um, get their databases to uh, 201 on 21. So uh, we're excited for that. And there's also uh, some incentives if they add additional clients uh, and all the information is on the flyer. Again, this is a, a national initiative, but we figured what better way to, se to celebrate the 1st of February. All right, very cool. Sounds great. Thank you for that choice. Um, and that's a fitting segue talking about databases because we're moving over to the king of databases. Uh, we have Marty Miller today. Um, Marty Miller is, I think, getting on a plane um, after this and flying to South South Africa to teach at the, the family reunion there. I don't know if it's actually today, but it's coming up. But uh, so it's uh, it's great to have somebody that's thought so highly of in the company that he's presenting at, at family reunion, join our little all hands. So uh, Marty, thank you for joining us. Uh, before we get started, do you want to just tell us a little bit about yourself and your role and what you're going to talk about today? Yeah, I was tempted to be quiet and let you continue the offer, but I thought that wouldn't be very nice, Al. So I am yeah, here. You, I am that, a... <laughs> you aren't here. That really would have messed me That'd up. That'd be real awkward, right? Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Definitely excited to be here. Guys, my name is Marty Miller. I'm the regional technology trainer for the South Texas region. For those uh, not familiar with our regions and why would you be, that's Houston, San Antonio, Austin, 
Rio Grande Valley, Laredo, Corpus Christi, kind of everything south of Dallas. So uh, regional technology trainer there with 29 offices and 11,000 agents. Um, I'm also a multi-center market center tech trainer for the Austin One Group. So that's our three market centers in Austin. So split time during my week between Austin and here home in Katy. I'm also a maps technology coach and I am the director of lead generation for our Austin One Team Ridge. So wear a few hats, but most importantly, uh, I'd like to think I'm a pretty good husband, an amazing dad to four beautiful daughters. So we have twin nine-year-olds, a three-year-old, and an 18-month-old. I say that only to say, if you have any spare prayers, I would love for you to throw them this way, because that definitely keeps me busy. But that's who I am in a nutshell. Coming today to kind of present to you a class that was originally written back in COVID. And during COVID, right, I'm assuming it's going to be sort of like it was for you, like it was for us, and that we didn't get to do a whole lot of things while we were out and about. And yet I knew, hey, we can't allow our agents to have a lapse in their production and what they're doing to create that production. And so to sort of came up with this class, and it's a little bit of an abbreviated version, um, but we're going to share the full deck with you. So I'm going to send that to Elizabeth. So we do talk in this class about things like direct mail and some email targeted campaigns. Um, we won't talk about that today just for time's sake. We're really going to focus on the social media characteristics, but we're going to send the whole deck to you so you guys can get that. So how do we create a million dollar farm, a million dollar real estate database through digital marketing and social media? Well, guys, really, it's as simple as six people per day. And oftentimes I put this slide on the screen and I get people that are like, no way, there's no literal way that that could be possible. But I'm going to call on one of you who has a calculator. We're going to make that make that true and prove that fact. But before we dive into the content, I want to dive into some really important content. There's a book out there called MREA. You might have been familiar with it. The Millionaire Real Estate Agent, the Red Book, sort of the real estate Bible. If you haven't read it, I'm going to give you four pages to highlight. If you have read it, I'm going to give you four pages to go back and highlight and really focus on two of the models of the four that are covered in MREA. And so the first model is the MREA, MREA economic model, which is covered on page 178. So there's your first page number to write down, to go back, to check out, dive into a little bit further. Page 178, the economic model. And what that says is based upon an average commission of 3%. Now we know commissions are completely negotiable. There's no set commissions. And yet if your average commission was 3% and the average sales price of your market was 250,000, in order to net a million dollars, you would need to close 320 transactions. Now net a million, that's gonna be after I've paid my cost of sales. So I've paid my cap, I've paid my royalty, I've paid any splits to buyer's agent, listing agents, referral agents. And after all of my expenses, right, I would net a million dollars. So let's hold on to that 320 closed transaction number because we're going to do a little math here in a second. Now, if you make more than 3%, great. If you work less than 3%, okay, you got a little more work. Most average markets, and Al, I should have asked you this earlier, what the average market price was there, but I'm going to pray it's a little bit higher or at least right at 250. If it's higher, you're doing okay. It's less transactions or you make more than a million. If it's a little lower, we'll do a little bit more work. Al, are we kind of close to that 250 or well over that? Depends on the market center. You could probably use six or 700,000 as, as the average. We're, we're making multi-millionaires in that case. So that's pretty exciting. So <clears throat> let's just stick with 250 and 3%, 320 closed transactions. And know when you hit this, you'll not only be an MREA, you'll be an MMREA. That's multi-millionaire. Thank you, Heidi. I figured somebody would get that. All right. So for every 12 people in your MET database, this comes from two more pages that we're writing down, page 186 and 187. We're switching gears on our models. We've gone from economic to our lead gen model. Gary and Jay and Dave teach us that for every 12 people in our MET database, hang on, Marty, I'm not really familiar with that vocabulary use. When we say a MET database, what does that mean? Those 12 people are who? And guys, don't overthink it. Those are people that we have met. I read a couple, a couple of lips there. Yes, don't overthink it, right? A met database is just someone that we've met, someone that we would recognize, someone we would know the name. They would ideally know who we are. That is someone that we have met. And we are taught that for every 12 people in our met database that you market to 33 times a year. Now, spoiler alert, if MREA2 ever comes out, and no, I don't know when it's going to come out, so don't bother asking. But if it ever comes out, we do believe that number is going to go higher because there's just more saturation of marketing happening in today's market, right? So 33 
MREA1, just expect that number to go higher when we get to MREA2. And yet for every 12 people in your MET database that you market to 33 times a year, you can expect two sales. What was the number that we had to get to to net a million based upon the original economic model? That was 320 closed transactions. All right, so if we need to get to 320 and we get two for every 12, no one told me there would be math. It's okay, I'm gonna do it for you. 12 people divided by two sales means one sale for every six people. If I need to get to 320, how many people do I need in my MET database? Well, 320 times six is gonna be 1,920. Now I need you to do me a math problem, but I'm gonna do a solid and let you use a calculator. Who's got a calculator ready? I would like for you to do this math problem on your calculator. And you can put the answer in the chat for whoever gets it first. 1,920, that's 1,920 divided by 365, which is the number of days per year. Go ahead and throw in the chat what the number is that you come up with. 1,920 divided by 365, 1,920 divided by, there we go. I'm sorry, the chat was catching up. 5.2, 5.26. Anyone ever met a 0.26? I feel like I've done a deal with a 0.26 every now and then, right? But we're going to round that up to what? Six people per day. If I can meet six people per day, I can add them to my database and I can market to them 33 times per year. I can close 320 transactions and net a million dollars. And in your case, based upon your average price point, net significantly more than that. So let's talk about some strategies around getting to that number, right? By the way, for those that say, hey, Marty, I don't want to work with people I know, there's a second strategy inside of MREA. That's the haven't met strategy for people that we haven't met. Don't overthink it, right? These are strangers. This is the phone book. We can market to them 12 times a year and we would need 50 for one sale, right? So we're gonna need significantly more haven't met just so you have an idea. So 16,000 haven't met would get you to 320 close transactions. Ideally, guys, most people say, hey, I'm not really on path A, I'm not really on path B, I'm on path C, which is some combination of both. If we looked at all of your databases right now, I can almost guarantee you that you would have Mets, right? Mom, dad, your best friend, those people are in your database and have it Mets, right? People that come in randomly from Facebook ads, that cousin's best friend that your cousin swore is gonna call you one of these days, but just hasn't called you. Right, that's I haven't met yet because we haven't made contact with that person. So how do we build a real estate farm that would start generating 320 closed transactions a year? Here's the reality, guys. If I got 20 realtors in a room, I lined all of you up and I said, without talking to one another, I want you to write down on this paper what real estate farming is. We would probably get 20 rather different answers. So that so you and I are all on the same page. I wanted to go ahead and define for you what real estate farming is in my mind since essentially I'm the one delivering the class. Hopefully we're similar in our mindset, but real estate farming, it's a marketing technique that's used by many successful real estate agents who are looking to develop business in a specific area or market demographic. Today, we're really gonna focus on neighborhoods, right? So what are they doing? They are farming the area for leads and contacts. Hold up, Marty, vocabulary switch. We were talking Mets and haven't Mets. Now we're talking leads and contacts need a little bit of context here. Help me understand which one's which. So show of hands, if you're really savvy, you can raise your digital hand. If not, you can just raise your hand. If you think a lead is a met, go ahead and raise your hand. Digitally or in person, you can give me one of these. If you think a lead is a met, raise your hand. Okay, right? If you think a lead is a haven't met, raise your hand. If you didn't raise your hand, raise your hand. All right, now get out. No, I'm just kidding. This is a participation sport, so we need to get you guys involved so that we are on the same page. Lead is a haven't met, right? That is someone that we have not yet had what with. What's the other word? It's contact. Conversation. Close. I like the C word, Michelle. You were on the same track as I was. You were just a little bit longer in your vocabulary use. I'm going to go with contact. A contact is simply someone that I have done what with? Made contact, right? So when you get into command and you start looking at, I've got contacts in here and I've got leads and I'm not really sure and I'm not understanding the use thereof, 
right? Oftentimes in real estate, we think about lead as someone who's hot to trot. They're sitting next to me in the car. We're showing homes. We're writing offers. But when we think about command as far as real estate farming goes, a lead is someone that we have not yet made contact with. A contact is someone that we have simply made contact with. So these successful realtors that are doing real estate farming, they're farming the area for leads and contacts, haven't met and met. And as the name suggests, this can involve any variety of methods, including direct mail, door knocking, social media, newsletters, email, or any other form of targeted advertising. Now, the letters in red are typically what we would cover in this entire course, but today we're really going to focus on social media strategies from a digital farm perspective and some things that you can do inside command and inside of Facebook to really start driving more contact, more transactions, more deals throughout your farm. So the first thing I would ask you is, are you running Facebook ads right now? And if you are, are you targeting the area in which that neighborhood you want to farm lives in? In the chat, does anyone know the smallest radius that we can target with a Facebook ad in command? If you know it, put that mile radius inside of command. Ira nailed it, right? Seth as well, 15 mile radius. Now, I don't know where you guys are, but I don't know many neighborhoods here in Texas that are 15 miles wide, right? We call that the country. So we can target Katie and we're gonna pick up a variety of neighborhoods in that 15 mile radius. So how do we make sure if we're looking to add contacts to our database only from our farm, that we run an ad where only people that live in the neighborhood would click on it? Well, first off, why don't we just ask them if they live there, right? So what's the first sentence of both of these ads? Are you a resident of the falls at Green Meadows? By the way, are any of you a resident of the falls at Green Meadows? Didn't think so, right? Because that's the neighborhood I live in. And if you saw this ad and the first sentence said, are you a resident of the falls at Green Meadows? What would you most likely do? My guess is you would just keep scrolling, right? On to the next post, on to the next video, whatever it may be. And you wouldn't click on my ad. Would I be disappointed about that? Nope. Because in this sense, I'm not looking to generate contacts from people that don't live in my farm. I only want to generate contacts for people that live in my specific farm. So I'm going to ask them if they live there. And if they don't, they can keep on keeping on. Now, if they do live there, I'm going to ask them a question about, hey, do you, do you know that home prices in the falls have increased dramatically? To receive an update about what's going on in the neighborhood, click here. Now on the screen, you can see the two ads. These are real life ads that I have run through command on my Facebook page. And on the screen, those two ads have a sort of grayed out image in the background. In the chat, can you tell me what that image is specifically? What's that an image of in the background of these two Facebook ads that I ran to target my neighborhood? It's a playground, right? It's specifically though, what playground? It's a children's playground. It is not a school playground. It's a playground right in front of a clubhouse. A clubhouse that's right in front of a pool. A pool, a clubhouse, and a playground located where? In the falls at Green Meadows. You see, you don't recognize that playground, but anyone that lived in the falls at Green Meadows would immediately recognize that playground because you can't drive into the falls without seeing that playground. So another thing to consider when you're running these ads, are you using a landmark that people that live in the farm would recognize? That playground doesn't speak to you, but I guarantee you if I put this ad without any copy in front of anyone that lived in the neighborhood and said, where is that? They'll say it's at the front of the neighborhood, right? So are you running ads with generic homes or generic playgrounds in this case, or with actual landmarks that people that live in the farm you want to develop would immediately recognize. On the screen are two ads and we call this A-B testing where we ran two ads simultaneously. So I had the same $50 budget, same 10 day um, duration, same exact 15 mile radius around Katie. Now in the chat, let's go left or right. Hopefully your monitor is the same way mine is. 8.08% .08 would be left. 52,919 would be right. Which one of these ads do you think generated more traffic? Do you think it was the one on the left or the one on the right? Ira's going right. Everyone else is still trying to find the chat. All right, we got right. 
right, right, right. Anyone going left? All right, Jennifer, you and me, you and me were the only two people that thought 8.08% would be the absolute best ad ever. Because you see, guys, the average increase three years prior running, three years every single year was about two to two and a half percent. And then we hit 8%. Holy crap, that's like more than three times growth. Our equity just went through the ceiling. Are you kidding me? And so I said, man, if I put 8%, everyone's going to click on this ad. And what happened? People said 8% of what? Because you see, I don't understand what 8% is. I guess that's cool. But you know what 52,919 is? That's a pool or a new car or no more credit card debt or no more school debt or the ability to actually now have a down payment on a bigger house or a smaller house or a different house. And I will tell you, I thought that the 8.08% the 8 .08 ad would do significantly better, 52,919, three times the number of leads. So when you are starting to run these sort of Facebook ads, I would recommend, hey, test them out against each other. Don't change anything. Now, somebody that's really savvy is going to pick up on the fact that I added emojis to the very bottom of the what's your home worth. Yes, I did add two things. Don't hold it against me, right? But the main thing that I changed was just the picture, specifically the text on the picture. So when you start running these ads and you're looking to build a farm of contacts for people that live in your neighborhood, one, target a 15 mile around mile radius around the neighborhood, two, give them a landmark they will immediately recognize that they live in the neighborhood, three, ask them if they live there and be okay with the fact that if they don't, they won't click, and four, provide some sort of value for them to actually click on the ad. Finally, number five, give them something they can do something with. I can't go to the mall and spend 8%. But I can guarantee you with four daughters, I can go to the mall and spend $53,000 just like that, right? Half of it would be like Lululemon or somewhere. But you guys get that, right? So do that sort of testing, run these sorts of ads. You're starting to create an audience from within our neighborhood. Now, show of hands, how many of you have a Facebook group for your neighborhood? Facebook group for your neighborhood. Actually, let's do it the opposite. Raise your hand if you do not have a Facebook group for your neighborhood. All right, Holly... And let's see, Michelle, I see a couple other people. Okay, so for those of you that just raised your hand because you don't have a Facebook group for your neighborhood, I want you to write this down. You ready? Step number one, go create a Facebook group for your neighborhood. And the reason being is, do you know who can't be kicked out of a Facebook group? Yeah, Holly, you can't be kicked out of the Facebook group if you create it. So if there's not already a Facebook group for your neighborhood, highly recommend you go create one. Right, because there's a lot of valuable content that can be shared in a neighborhood Facebook. But you're correct, Ira. If you build it, <clears throat> they can't kick you out of it. Now, it doesn't mean they have to join it. But I think we all know a realtor or two that have been kicked out of a neighborhood when they were young and dumb and posted things that no one cared about. So let's start talking about things that people will care about inside of a Facebook group. And no offense if you're posting your listings in your open houses, but you need to stop because no one cares. Let's post things inside a neighborhood Facebook group that people will care about. Here's an example. So we moved into our new neighborhood about two and a half years ago. And first thing that I decided to do was I need to market myself as a realtor to this neighborhood, but I don't want to be that guy, right? I don't want to be the guy that goes in and says, hey, I'm Marty Miller with Keller Williams. You know, I'm looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate in the next three, six, 12 months. Please DM me, call me, text me, send me a smoke signal. I'm there. No one likes that guy. Right? So how could I provide value or some sort of content to my neighborhood Facebook group that would remind people that I'm a realtor, but not have it right in their face? So here's the first post I made in our neighborhood Facebook group. <clears throat> I said, hey, neighbors, I'm working on a real estate neighborhood marketing video for my day job. What did I just tell you that I do without telling you that I do? Right? Didn't say, hey, I'm a realtor with Keller Williams and I'm looking to see who's looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate. I said, I'm looking, I'm working on a real estate neighborhood marketing video for my day job. And our first neighborhood I wanted to feature was, duh, ours. But that being said, I'm pretty new to the neighborhood. And I wanted your take on what you thought the neighborhood features were, the top neighborhood features were for our neighborhood. So this video system that I use to create this actual video will allow me to choose up to three characteristics. So they're all listed below. Feel free to choose as many or as few as you would like. I appreciate your help with this in advance. 
By the way, where do you think I created this amazing one minute long marketing video preset to music and animations? It starts with C, it ends with command, right? You can build a marketing video inside of command designs. Seth, I appreciate Canva, great program. And I can do it inside of designs like that. If you're not familiar on how to create a video design, get with your local market center tech trainer. They can walk you through the process, but guys, I'm going to tell you, it'll take you about five minutes to do. And you can create that marketing video. By the way, where do you think those 30 characteristics got pulled from? From command designs in the video editor, it actually says, which characteristics do you want to choose? Now it's going to serve three up to you based upon the neighborhood, but you can change those to select any of the characteristics that you want. Right. So I needed to create a video for the falls at Green Meadows said, which neighborhood characteristics should I choose? Guys, when was the last time you made a post? Those of you that do have a neighborhood Facebook group and you had 99 people interact with it. By the way, this is week one in the neighborhood. Right. So consider giving them something to interact with it. Now, Cheryl, the group was already there. I was lucky in that I came into a neighborhood where there was already a Facebook group. I think there's some different strategies around advertising a new group. Might talk about that a little bit later, right? So here's the interactive post. Here's what it looked like. Here was the poll. It all came from command. And I was so excited about this post that I promptly forgot about it. And then two weeks later, something happened, right? Two weeks later, a mom posted in the Facebook group and she said, neighbors, I need your help. She said, my son went running this morning, and that's not unlike him, except that he left two hours before he typically leaves. He's been gone for four hours, and he left behind his wallet, his keys, and his phone. And I'm scared. Can you help me find my son? I, my office, right now I'm in the office, it looks out the front door, right? So I have a big window, bay window that looks out the front door. And I saw this post, and I looked up, and within a matter of moments, I saw KDPD roll by on a cruiser. Right. And then two people, two gentlemen in a side by side, right? Those souped up golf carts essentially drive by. And I walked out the front door and I'm telling you, it looked like an anthill had been kicked over. Right. We were still in the process of new construction. So there were people out working, walking into each one of the new construction areas, talking to the workers. Had anyone seen anything? I looked down the street. Our community is a former golf course that the developer has basically bought. It was an old golf course kind of falling into misrepair. So they developed it. So there was trails and ravines and lakes. And you look down and there's sort of this ravine at the end of our street. And there's people walking down in there, right? The place where you would absolutely not want to find anyone, but they are searching for this missing boy down in the ravine, right? Now, what we didn't know, mom and son had gotten into a massive fight the night before. She didn't need to share with us that, not really our information, but the son was trying to run away. They found him about 30 miles west of Katy off of I-10. He had hitchhiked that far and they were able to find him, get him back home, get everything kind of situated and everything was good. But I will tell you immediately, I realized when I saw 39 people say friendly community, that it wasn't BS. Because I'll tell you my last neighborhood that we moved from, they would have said, mm, thoughts and prayers. And that would have been the end of that. So... I didn't want to chase the ambulance, if you will. I waited two weeks after that scenario, and I remembered the poll. And I remembered the people that said friendly community. And I remember literally being like, yeah, right. And so I got to make another post inside of this Facebook group. And it said, hey, about a month ago, I made a poll. And if you recall, you told me that it was a friendly community. And I figured, yeah, right. And then in reality, you were right. Because this community came together. They linked arms around a mother missing his son and they found him and got him home. By the way, here's that video that I created in case you were interested because I forgot about it and you reminded me of it and here it is. Now I'm full transparency and I'm always very transparent about commands, opportunities and its strengths and some of its weaknesses. Inside of designs, you can create this one minute marketing video. It has music and the music's a little corny. It has animations based upon which characteristics you choose but there's not 30 animations. So if you choose dog lovers, it's a picture of a pig farm. Don't ask me why, I don't know either. But if that's going to be a little weird to post, go ahead and own it. P.S. Here's that video I told you I was creating. It's a touch corny. Don't ask me why the graphic for dog lovers shows a farm with pigs. 
and yet I thought you might want to see it. If you ever have any questions about real estate, I'm always happy to help. One idea to start thinking about posting your neighborhood group is, what do you think the features are inside of our neighborhood that are top features? Create the video, have the opportunity to post it. Now, the video also contains market stats that change month to month, quarter to quarter, year to year. So it does give you an opportunity to post that video more than once because the content continues to change. Susan, I've given marketing the feedback. We'll see what happens. Next up, when was the last time the most expensive house in your neighborhood sold? Do you know what it sold for? More importantly, do your neighbors know what it sold for? Are you keeping tabs? If you truly are the marketer, the, the agent of choice, for your neighborhood, are you keeping the neighbors up to speed on every time a record has set? Because guys, the reality is it probably got set within the last year or so. So are you sharing that information? Now, I didn't ask this out. Are you guys a disclosure state or a non-disclosure state? Meaning, can you share the actual sales price or is that a no-no? Sally's saying yes. All right, perfect. Susan said yes. So in Texas, it's fun. We're called a non-disclosure state which means we can't actually provide specific sales prices on specific properties unless you have hired me to do something like a CMA or whatever it may be. So just as something to kind of be aware of why this post doesn't have an address, it does share the fact that, hey, we set a record for the most expensive home sold in the neighborhood. Now, there's always going to be haters, guys. Every time you make a post, there's going to be haters, people that just want to talk, you know what. One of the things you'll say is, well, not all the homes were on the market. Yeah, no kidding. I understand that. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in the post. So new record was set this week for residential sales in the falls at Green Meadows. HAR, which are Houston Association of Realtors, shows a record of 306 homes being listed and sold via the MLS. By the way, many builder sales are not listed in the MLS as a heads up. This week, we had a cl home closed for $599,111, which broke the record by $11,000. $111. Now, when you guys start talking about increasing home values, what do the haters all say? Starts with T, it ends with taxes, right? They start talking about taxes. They get really upset. Oh, that just means we got to pay more taxes. Well, get in front of the haters and address the issue. I know that some of you are concerned about the increases in taxes because of the increasing appraisal amounts. And yet it also means, hey, our largest assets, most of them are increasing in value. And in our neighborhood, it was on pace for 8 to 10% over the last year. If any of you need comps to help you with potential protests, feel free to reach out. By the way, if you haven't filed for your homestead exemption, which I'm not sure if you guys have homestead exemptions there, but in Texas, you can have a homestead exemption if it's your primary resident and get you a break on your taxes, but you do have to file documentation with the county. I'll send out that information next month. Can you start to see how these are posts that you're making in a neighborhood Facebook group where people realize you're in real estate, you're not shoving it down their throat, and they're actually entertained or interested in reading the post? By the way, have I once posted a listing, an open house, or asked you if you're looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate? Not once yet, right? So some ideas to continue thinking about. When you're a tech guy, people like to give you tech gifts. And this is a picture of an echo spot. Now, this was the second echo spot that had made its way into our house. The first echo spot I actually set up because I thought it was pretty cool. And then my wife realized it had a camera. She was convinced people were spying on us. She took it and threw it in the trash. So when the second one showed up, she said, what the heck is that thing doing? I said, I don't know. Someone gifted it to me because they thought a tech guy deserved a tech gift. And I promise I won't set it up. So it sat right there on my desk for about three months. And I finally decided I need to get rid of this stupid echo spot. So what should I do with it? I should just throw it away. No, I'll give it away. Who should I give it away to? Well, you know what? I should have given it away to someone who would actually like it. You know what? I should give it away to a neighbor. Who would like it? Hmm, how could I find out? Why don't I do a giveaway? Now, I just told them that we had set a record for the most expensive home ever sold, correct? But when was the last time the most expensive home sold price per square foot in your neighborhood? Are you tracking that sort of data? Because can we agree, that's probably a different house. That's not the largest house in the neighborhood, but it's the one with the best backyard, pool, spa, et cetera. So are you tracking that sort of information? Are you providing that to your neighbors? And if you wanted to, could you do it as a fun giveaway? So here's what the post reads. Okay, neighbors, it's time for a You Guess It giveaway. Yesterday, we needed to set a new sales record as a neighborhood for the most expensive, highest price per square foot 
of a home sold in the history of the neighborhood. Hint, it was somewhere between $100 per square foot and $250 per square foot. That way, when you say, hey, you go ahead and guess, they don't say, I don't know, 500,000. And you're like, per square foot, you idiot, right? That's not fun to say. So go ahead and give them some parameters and then make sure that you understand realtors are competitive and realtors want to win and realtors have access to the MLS. So you got to rule them out, right? So fine print, realtors, please be nice. Sit this one out. Friends and families of realtors, don't cheat. Don't go ask your realtor friend, hey, what was the price most expensive in the falls? Whoever gets closest is going to win this Amazon Echo spot. Guys, I do not lie. The first comment that was made, someone said, are we playing prices right rules? First comment. I hadn't thought about it. I said, sure, I guess. So I went back and edited the post and said, prices right rules, closest without going over. By the way, no more than one guest per neighbor. While I'm editing the post, someone guessed and they said something along the lines of $170.88. The person that had said, are we playing prices right rules, then comments. Do you know what their guess was? It was an 89. Immediately, the first person that guessed said, oh, that's jacked up. I can't believe you did that. You always do this. Guys, I'm telling you, they start bantering back and forth. They're talking trash. They're making their guesses. They're saying that's way too high. That's way too low. When was the last time you posted something on your neighborhood Facebook group and had 79 people comment on it? Over an Amazon Echo spot, guys, some of you still have Christmas gifts in your house. They are in the original packaging. They're in that closet or that cabinet. You know what I call it, closet or cabinet, right? Where you stick the gifts you didn't really want. You're going to give it away next year to someone else's white elephant party. Spoiler alert, pull it out, give it away to one of your neighbors and do a fun giveaway. By the way, when you say you're going to give something away, what do you have to then do? Got to actually give it away, right? So what do you then get to do? You get to make another post in this Facebook neighborhood group that people are starting to actually enjoy your posts because you're not ramming real estate down their throat and you're not posting every listing or open house you're taking. You're just having fun with real estate data, things that make them smarter, more intelligent, right? That make them more money by helping them save taxes or whatever it may be. So here's that next post. And we have a winner. Congratulations, Kaylin, for winning the You Guessed It giveaway with an exact correct price of 187 a square foot. Now, this record setting closing smashed the previous record of 177 per square foot. What are the haters going to say? Well, that's just because it had that massive pie shaped lot and it had the badass pool. Excuse the language. I'll pay more later, right? So get in front of that. Yep. By the way, this was one of the fall's more cozy homes that also featured a massive cul de sac lot with a pool and hot tub which certainly helped this record setting price. That way they can't be like, well, I know that house. It's got that massive backyard. Yeah, I know. I already told everybody that, right? Get in front of the haters. So what are we doing with that post? Who doesn't want to know who won? So everyone's going to tune in and read the post, praying it's them. It feeds them data without them even realizing it. They now realize what the highest price per square foot is. So when you go on that listing appointment and they say, yeah, Marty, we'd like to list for 210 a square foot. And you'll say, well, Remember last month when I posted about the record set at 187? What makes you think your house is going to blow that record out of the water by $23 a square foot? We can take them back to that without being too aggressive. We can just say, I don't know if you remember this, but I did that giveaway and the record set was 187. Yeah. So mm. by the way, when you say you're going to give something away and you name a winner, what do you need to actually then go do? You need to go take the echo spot to their house and drop it off. And while you're dropping it off and you're at the doorbell and there's Kaylin, what are you going to do? right? Take a selfie. Here's Kaylin winning the prize. Here's additional posts that we're making inside the neighborhood Facebook group that people are entertained by. They're reading. And in every single one of these posts, what have I told them that I do without telling them that I do? Guys, here's the reality. When you go to the chili cook-off, now that might be a Texas thing, but we have chili cook-offs here in the neighborhood, right? They do two a year. When you walk into that chili cook-off, do people walk towards you or do they walk away from you? Did they say, oh, here comes Phyllis. Phyllis is going to ask me, who do you know that's looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate in the next three, six, 12 months? Because all Phyllis says. Or do they walk towards you and say, what's the latest on the market? We break any records lately, right? Do they come towards you to talk about real estate or they walk away from you because they know you're only going to talk about real estate? Some things to think about. Now you've started creating leads from the ads that you've run, from the interactions you're having in the neighborhood Facebook group, You've started to create a database of people that live in your digital farm. 
Usually that's your own neighborhood, but if it's a different neighborhood, same rules apply. I'm starting to create contacts, ideally with names, phone numbers, and emails that live in the digital farm that I want to work. So what do I do next? If I told you, those of you that are familiar with Facebook ads, that I spent $10 running an ad and that ad got seen by 291 people, would you say that was a pretty good ad? Those of you that know Facebook ads, you probably know, one, you're missing a piece of information. And yet the average Facebook ad typically has in the thousands, if not tens of thousands of impressions. Because remember, impression is just someone that sees it. They didn't stop, they didn't click, they didn't fill out information, they just saw the ad. So you might be tempted to say 291 impressions, Marty, that doesn't sound like a whole lot. It's not a lot of people that saw your ad. When was the last time you ran an ad where 86% of the people you wanted to see the ad actually saw the ad? Because you see inside of command, you can run ads targeting everybody in a 15 mile radius and you can also run ads that target specific people in your database. If you've got a phone number or an email for those contacts, and you have a tag associated with those contacts, in my world, it's simply a tag that says, falls at Green Meadows, you can build an audience of those contacts inside of campaigns and say, command, I just want to target the people that have this tag inside of command with this specific ad. Right, Because earlier we were praying they saw the ad and that they lived in the neighborhood. But this time, guess what? We already know they live in the neighborhood. So we can continue to serve up ads to them such that they continue to see your name, your team, your brand, your logo as the person that always knows what's happening in the neighborhood. Right. By the way, Facebook needs at least 100 of those contacts that it recognizes just so you guys have a heads up, it's got to be a minimum of 100. It recognizes it and it recognizes it based upon phone or email. So the more content you have per content, the higher likelihood your audience will take. An example, when this first came out, I thought I was going to be rich. This was before I was even the RTT. I went to the KW white pages. I downloaded the name and KW email address for everyone that lived in Austin, Dallas, San Antonio, Corpus. I created an audience of 1400 realtors. And I started an ad that said, I will pay you a 33% referral fee if you send me a listing referral in Katy, Texas. By the way, that still holds true. Feel free to send one. I'd be happy to pay you. But it said a 33% referral fee if you send me a listing referral in Katy, Texas. And I fired the ad and it immediately failed. And so I had to go back to support and the dev team and say, man, this thing's broken. I can't believe this doesn't work. And they said, well, let's have our developers take a look at what you did and we'll see if we can't fix it. And the developers came back and they said, Marty, you know, you created an audience of only realtors. And I said, yeah, but they have Facebook. I said, yeah, but do you realize the only emails you have are kw.com email addresses? It was Lynn at kw.com, Stephanie at kw.com, Luis at kw.com, right? I said, okay. And they said, how many of those people do you think log into Facebook using their at kw.com email address? Raise your hand if you log into Facebook with your at kw.com email address, right? We all know you're still using that burner AOL account from when you were 16, guilty, right? So that audience failed because Facebook couldn't recognize anyone and I didn't have phone numbers, I'd only pulled email addresses. So just so that you can understand, the goal is to start creating contacts that live in the farm. We're gonna do that by interacting on the Facebook groups. We might do a giveaway Right. Hey, if you want to win a Peloton, a green egg, a $500 gift card to the local steakhouse, you can get people advertising that giveaway within the neighborhood to start submitting their information to you. So you're building a list of people that live in the neighborhood. Now, I'll tell you, I started this whole project with my neighborhood. This is actually real life. These aren't fake ads. These are actual ads that I ran for my neighborhood to build this farm. And two months into doing all of this work, my wife walked in one day. Now, I met my wife through KW. She was actually a, a student in at a night class that I was teaching. I like to think she was hot for teacher, and she loves when I make that joke. And she said, what are you working on? And I said, um, I'm building a farm for the neighborhood. I'm trying to get all the contacts and commands so I can start targeting them with ads and some different things. And she says, well, why, don't, why didn't you just use the directory? I said, why didn't I just use the what? She goes, the directory. And I had to look at her and say, what are you talking about? What directory? You see, when you move into a new house, everybody, and I mean everybody, knocks on your door within the first two or three days. So we had the solar guys out. We had the pest control guys out. 
we had the people that wanted to clean the house. We had the people that wanted to spray paint the curb with our letter, our, our house number. So that way the ambulances could find us easier. I'm like, how many ambulances come to this neighborhood? So everybody was knocking on our door. So by the third day, I said, Nicole, if one more person knocks on that door, I'm going to lose it because I was working from home at the time, obviously. And it was interrupting every call I was on. And she said, don't worry, I'll handle it if anyone knocks on the door today. And so I can see out through my window, this little old lady walks up to the front door and I'm like, son of a biscuit. And so my wife answers the door, has a 20 minute conversation with this person. They leave and I forget about that conversation. So two months later, she says, why don't you use the directory? I said, what directory? She goes, you remember two months ago when that little old lady knocked on the door? And I said, yeah. She goes, she was the lady creating the directory. And I said, what directory? She goes, I have an Excel file of every person that lives in the neighborhood, including their address, phone number, and email. That little old lady asked us for our information. I gave it to her. And then two days later, she emailed me a directory with everyone's information. By the way, she has now sent it two additional times. She sends it about the first of the month, every month. I said, this is something you felt like you didn't need to share with me. So we had a conversation about that. And yet, do you have a directory in your neighborhood? Why would you need a directory of all of your neighbors and person? Guys, I'm imagining it's probably a little colder where you are than it is here. And if the pipes freeze and burst, do you know who to call? What if you knock on the door and no one answers? Worse yet, what if the house is on fire and you can't get a hold of the people that live there to find out if anyone's in the house, if pets or animals or anything they need to save, right? What if there's a lost dog and you're just trying to find out where the dog belongs and you call the vet and they're like, all we have is an address. Do you know how to get a hold of your neighborhood, the neighbors that live there in the event of a natural situation? Now, some of you may already have this directory, but if you don't, who could certainly start that? Right now, to be fair, this little old lady may have a little more time on her hands than you do, but you don't need to get it done in one day. Right, Susie, I don't know who Natalie is, but maybe Natalie is the little old lady that walks the neighborhood. I don't know, but I feel like I'm missing a joke, but that works too. Right, so considerations do you start a directory such that you could then target the people in your neighborhood? Strategy number three retarget those contacts continually. Is that active marketing or passive marketing? If you call me, that's active marketing. If you text me, that's active marketing. And yet when you're on Facebook and you see an ad, do you get upset? Are you like, oh, another ad? Or you just keep scrolling, just knowing that part of being on Facebook is seeing ads, right? If one of those stinking insurance people texts me one more time that says, hey, I'm Amanda and I help people in NAR get better rates on their, oh, I'm just going to like choke them out through the phone, right? That is active marketing that has frustrated me. But if I just saw occasionally an ad that said, hey, I work with realtors from NAR, help get better insurance, I'm not that upset. I just keep going, right? So it's a way to market yourself as the realtor of choice for your neighbors without them even realizing you're doing it. We love insurance people. I hope that's true, Al not the ones that text me, right? I'll have them text you. Note to self, share Al's number. All right. So do we just our own? Yeah, I wish these were not my own. So what does this end up all costing? We really focus primarily on the social media aspect. But again, I'm going to send you this entire deck. It's going to lose a little context without me talking about it, but it will have some real life examples of postcards that I send out to the neighborhood. Right. So I have the neighbor's addresses, obviously, because I know their addresses. I can pull that easily from Remind or tax records or your favorite title company can probably help you with that. Right. Get all those addresses. If that's all you start with. Remember, there were two strategies when we first talked, the met and the haven't met. If you don't have their phone number or email and you've never made contact with them, what are they? Well, they're a haven't met. But can you still market to them? Certainly, you could start off by just sending one postcard a month to them. You'll see some examples of the postcards that I send to my neighbors when I send you the full deck. We talked about Facebook ads. We talked about social posts. Once we get their email, we could also start serving up to them marketing information via email. Do me a favor. I'm going to talk to you about the most important, unfortunately not best utilized tool inside of command. Everyone take your real estate hat off for a second. I know some of you were born wearing that hat, but go ahead and take the real estate hat off. You walk out the front door and across the street in the neighbor's yard is a for sale sign. In the chat, what's the first thing you think about? Throw it in the chat. I walk out, there's the sign. I'm not a realtor, so don't tell me, dang, I should have talked to them more often, right? I'm not a realtor, I'm just a neighbor. I walk out, 
Cheryl says, how much? Cheryl, why do you care? Why do you care what they're selling their house for if they live across the street? Why do you think Cheryl cares in the chat? Why would you care? Yeah. Because what do we show up with at the listing appointment? We show up with comps. What are comps? It's just the neighbor's houses, right? We're literally showing up with the neighbor's houses, the ones that have sold. And we're going to say, this is what your home is worth based upon what the neighbors sold their houses for. By the way, ours is always worth more than theirs, right? And some of you might've said, well, I'm nosy. I'd love to see what the inside looks like. We can serve up that information to our neighbors as well. Do you think they walk out the front door and think of anything different? You think you're the only one that cares what the neighbors are selling for? Guys, spoiler alert, everyone cares. So why aren't you telling them? If you can get the name, address, and email for every neighbor that lives in your neighborhood, you can put them on the monthly neighborhood nurture, assuming that your neighborhood is a recognizable next door neighborhood. Now, next door, exclusive partnership with Keller Williams. We are the only company that they sold their data to. So we had the exclusive right to purchase that data. Now, in Katie, man, I'm going to tell you, next door is a riveting social camp, social platform. I mean, it is lost cats whose dog crapped in my yard. Why are the fireworks going off again? Right? Really amazing social. No, the content is not that great. Michelle, it sounds like it's better there. And remember, how does a next door market get created? A next door neighborhood get created? If you didn't know this, in order to create a next door neighborhood, you actually have to contact next door and say, here are the boundary lines and here's the name I recommend. And they will send postcards to everyone within the boundary lines that you've recommended saying, there's a neighbor of yours attempting to create a next door neighborhood. And this is what they believe the boundary lines are and the name are. Do you agree? If so, scan this QR code or, or visit this link. And when they can get about 10% of those people to respond, a new next door neighborhood gets created. So that partnership allows us to use the monthly neighborhood nurture to provide hyper local market data specifically for houses that are being listed in your neighborhood. Man, I need to move to wherever you guys alley because I'm telling you that's not so much down here. But what does it end up costing this touch plan that we're talking about? I've got direct mail postcards going out. I'm running ads. I'm creating social posts. I'm also doing emails. We talked to you about the two in the center, some ideas around Facebook ads and social posts. So how many touches first have we created? Well, it's one postcard per month. So how many touches is that in a year? Hopefully you said 12. I know I told you there wasn't going to be math, but yeah, 12 times one is 12. One to two ads per month. So now we're looking at 12 to 24 additional touches. One to two social posts inside your neighborhood group. Now we've got 12 to 24 more touches and one to two emails per month. Now we've got 12 to 24. I guess we're looking at somewhere between a 48 and 72 touch that you have just created if you use all of these different channels. By the way, you might not see my ad, but I guarantee you got the postcard. Oh, you don't check the mail? That's okay because you got my email. Right, All the different ways that you can touch the people that live in your farm. What's it end up costing and what have you created? Well, I told you I would give you four pages inside of MREA and some of you only have three written down. You're like, where's the fourth? The high C's are saying he said four pages. Here's that fourth page, 147. Inside of MREA, page 147 talks to you about what a 33 touch is. And you guys have just amplified that into a 48 to 72 touch. So you could go to that page and learn what a systematic marketing and prospecting technique looks like. Budget-wise, we didn't talk about postcards, but I'm going to send you the deck so you can see the postcards that I send out. Spoiler alert, I'm just taking pictures of homes that have sold in the neighborhood. And on the back, I'm telling them what they sold for. Now in Texas, I can't disclose the specific price. So I just use averages, right? And otherwise, you're going to be able to get all the information. Average price, average price per square foot, average days on market. And I do that for a one month and then a 12 month total as well. In addition, ads, I usually recommend 25 to $30 per ad and you're running one to two per month. So about 50 bucks per month. How much does it cost to make a post inside your Facebook group of the neighborhood? Completely free, right? How much does it cost to send out a monthly neighborhood nurture? Completely free, right? So annual costs for what I do to farm my neighborhood about $3,500 
based upon the price point in my neighborhood, when I close one listing, it's about a 4X return on my investment. How do I know that? Because the first listing I took from all this marketing effort, I made $14,500 in commission, right? Almost 4X. By the way, the second year, I've now taken three listings in the neighborhood and we're up to borderline 10X on the actual investment and in farming the neighborhood. And I intend to take even more come next year. So some quick strategies that you can use for digital farming. Does that mean we can't go out and do real real estate? Well, congratulations, COVID has gone. The lockdown is gone. We can get out of our house. So what are some additional things that we should be doing outside the house? Guys, think about open houses, but plus it. There's a gentleman here in Clear Lake, right outside of Houston, that's being sued by the HOA. Isn't that something you guys all strive for? right? Like I want to be the realtor that gets sued by the HOA. The reason he's being sued by the HOA is his open houses are too popular because he has created a loyal following at every one of his open houses. He has a food truck in front of the open house. All you have to do to get whatever the food truck is serving is go inside and tour the open house and sign in with him. You get a token to go back out to the food truck to get a free item of whatever it is. Marty, that sounds like all you're going to get is a bunch of neighbors. I know. And that's why he is so successful because all the neighbors love him coming to the neighborhood, but the HOA doesn't because they look at that as something that's taking away from the neighborhood. Look at all the traffic. Look at all the people parked on the streets. How can you get so successful with, H with open houses that your HOA wants to sue you to stop doing open houses? Could you do a quarterly or semi-annual neighborhood gathering like National Night Out, Trick or Trunk, Hot Dogs, Cool Dogs? Totally ripped that off from another realtor. She had dogs, moved into a new neighborhood, wanted to meet other neighbors with dogs, got with a lender, hot dogs, hamburgers, sodas, and chips at the neighborhood park. Everyone bring your dog. It's now a quarterly event that's so popular that people show up with their cats because they just want to be there and hang out. They're like, I don't have a dog, but I wanted a free hamburger. Can I serve up my cat in order? Right. It's a really popular event. Tax appraisal season. Do you know who's moved into your neighborhood in the last year? Could you easily find that out if you went back to the MLS? Here's the names of everyone that just moved into the neighborhood. If you do have homestead exemptions, is that something that everyone in your neighborhood knows about? Because when people move from California to Texas, they don't get homestead exemption. And we tell them they can save anywhere from 8 to 15% on their taxes if they file this form that you hand to them, you become a hero to them who then recognize as the real estate agent of choice. Finally, guys, making these sort of digital connections that we're talking about right now, they lead to enhanced personal connections, which means that they recognize you and your name and they're going to grow to like you even before they meet you, which means when you sit down at that dining room table, you have a significantly higher chance of them signing the paperwork than the other guy or gal who hasn't done the work. The cartoon simply says, let's go back to meeting online because you're much better looking there. Hopefully you're all really good looking online based upon the fact that you don't just serve up open houses or listings. You serve up marketing value and techniques that people care about. That's my real cell phone, my real email. If you call me, I won't answer. And that's not out of disrespect. I spend most, almost my entire day doing what we're doing right now on Zoom calls or in person. But you can feel free to text me or email me. Give me 24 hours and I'll do my best to get back to you if you have any specific questions. Like I said, I'm sending the entire deck to Elizabeth and I believe she's been recording this today. So if you missed any part of it or you want to go back and rip off and duplicate any of it, you're more than welcome. Certainly was glad to be here. And thanks, Al, for having me out. That is impressive. You landed that plane at exactly three o'clock on the dot. That's pretty cool. Um, do you have a minute to stay on if people have um, questions? Yeah, absolutely. hundred percent. Yeah. Um, does anybody want to unmute and just ask a question to Marty or Elizabeth? Did you see any in the, in the chat that you want to share? I didn't see anything in the chat. So if anyone wants to unmute and ask. Anybody? Everyone's just singing your praises in here, Marty, saying thank you and how great it was. I appreciate it. I heard someone say something. Well, who was that? Cheryl? Yeah, um, I have a quick, it, you're, you're with the tech department, like with Keller Williams. So I don't work for Keller Williams Realty International, KWRI. I'm a regional tech trainer for the South Texas region. Gotcha. Okay. Um, I was just going to ask a different question in reference to sorting contacts in command, but that's okay. I wasn't sure. But thank you very much for this information because sure. I started digging deep in this and this information is phenomenal. Thank you very much. So Eli said, how long did it take you to implement all of these ideas? 
It took some time. <laughs> you guys saw the first one and that was literally the post inside the Facebook group, right? So started doing that a little bit. Then realized, you know what? I should probably be farming these people with postcards as well. Because I don't know about where you are. Postcards used to be really popular and then they sort of fell out of fashion, if you will. I mean, I used to get two a week and then just started getting none for months. And so then decided, hey, let's go the road that's a little less traveled, although it'll cost a little bit more. But remember, you can do that direct mail directly inside of command. So literally just started taking pictures. Every time a house closed in the neighborhood, I would drive by, take a picture of it, and then put that onto a postcard. And I'll send you what those postcards look like when we send out the deck as well. Thank you. Right, I had Thank a, you. a couple of questions. Um, what, what do you do on YouTube? Because when we posted that you were joining us, we had several people all saying, I love his YouTube channel. I love watching his videos. What is it that, that you do on YouTube? And where do we find you? Just Google your name and we'll find your YouTube channel. Yeah, I'll make it easier for you. So I've actually created a video series called the KW Command 66 Day Challenge. Um, it comes out of the one thing. So it says on average 66 days to set a habit. So it's one video per day teaching you KW Command. If you want to go to the most recent challenge, which is now 8.0, you can simply go to KW Command 668. So for 66 day challenge, KW Command 668.com. That's a Google sheet of all the videos that I've created for 8.0. It also includes 7.0, 5.0, some of the older videos. Uh, we're almost finished with 8.0. So I think today I recorded day 59, if I remember. Uh, so about six more, seven more videos. But I go applet by applet inside of command, just walking you through each one. Um, I have a short attention span. So the videos are five to seven minutes, somewhere in that range. Some of them go a little long if it's a more complex topic, but just bite-sized chunks to sort of learn KW command um, by going through that. So kwcommand668.com. And the other question I had is you talked about the minimal financial investment for, for doing this. What would you say the, the time investment is? I mean, I imagine... You know, you get you're already getting what you said three listings from this, but I'm imagining it's not taking you a ton of time to do this. It's not. So the the first postcard took a while, right? Because I'm a little bit of a perfectionist. I wanted it to look really good. But once I had the postcard, you'll see that design inside of the deck. It was just a matter then of changing the four photos, changing the address, and then changing the stats on the back. So that now takes me probably 30 minutes. I have myself set up as a buyer in my own MLS. So I actually get a notification every time a, a new property gets listed inside the neighborhood. And so then I just make a list of it on a little post-it note inside my glove box. And when I'm driving the neighborhood, if I drive past one of those houses, specifically when there's no kids, no toys, no cars, that's when I do my best to take the picture. That way there's no identifying information of the actual property, but then I can send out those postcards. The monthly neighborhood nurture, that happens every month without me ever having to do anything but add you to it. And then the social post, I'll be honest with you, there's no like set cadence. It's the second Tuesday I make my post. It's just when something strikes my fancy that I should share with the neighborhood. But I'm always thinking about what are things neighbors would care about that don't involve my new, new listing or my open house, right? Stats, information. Hey, I don't know if you saw this, but there's a wine festival happening in Old Town, Katy, and it's 10 minutes away. Um, you know, you can Uber for the less, less uh, cost, of the, you know, a cup of coffee or whatever it may be. Got it. Okay. So yeah. So I mean, for those people that are thinking about doing this, you're doing a targeted post in those group every now and again, you don't need to be, you know, the admin that's commenting on everybody, like you said, when the dog craps on the lawn or somebody's pipes are, aren't working, it's just your interaction with that is the occasional post and following up on that. So yeah, it's probably my goal is, is twice a month with something that can be interactive, entertaining, informative, but something that's not ramming it down their throat, but just reminding them on a consistent basis. It's now getting to the point where people are tagging me when people have questions about events or real estate. People in the neighborhood will tag me when it comes to that sort of a post. And they'll be like, I don't know, but Marty will. And then it makes it even easier because then I can just go in and comment based upon those actual posts. Uh, Jade, you, you had your hand up, it looks like. Sorry, I'll go ahead. I was going to say, it looked like Jade had a question. No, we're on the same page. Oh, yeah. Hi. Um, so you mentioned that you had like this, Got, had gotten this whole directory from your wife of the people in the neighborhood. I have access to um, a whole directory of both of my kids' schools, the middle school and the high school, but I would probably get banned if I started like emailing them without permission. You know, you can't really solicit them. So sure. how, what would you recommend I do with this? Like, it's just like a gold, <laughs> gold mine directory, but I can't really use it. So fantastic question. You can, if they don't know you're using it and they don't mind you're using it. Right. When you see an ad on Facebook, do you get upset? 
Oh, so if I send a Facebook ad to them, I can do that. So my recommendation is how can you capture their information when you already have their information? Think about doing some sort of giveaway, some sort of event something along those lines where they would have to register to win or register to attend. So it's okay. the Easter egg hunt, right? You want to come get pictures with the Easter bunny and attend the Easter egg hunt. All you have to do to register to attend is fill out this form. You already have their information, but now you can add a tag that says, okay, to call, okay, to text. Okay. TCPA friendly compliance sort of way, receive that information, right? Remember when okay. you're targeting with the Facebook ad, most people don't know that you're in the background putting in their information and telling command only target these people. So I would right. start off by putting them in command and starting with Facebook ads that will lead to a form where you can yeah, quote unquote legitimately great. capture their information. Thank you so much. That's perfect. Cause I had all this information. I'm like, Oh my gosh, what do I do with it? Thank yeah, you. Absolutely. All right. Any other questions in the chat? Otherwise we will thank Marty and, and wrap it up. Did you say anything in there, Elizabeth? All right. Nope. So Marty uh, shared his contact info. If you have any questions, reach out. Um, thank you so much, Marty. This was super helpful. I know I got a lot out of it. And I think everyone else did. Really appreciate your time today. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. And look forward to seeing you hopefully in Vegas, a family reunion, if not before. And uh, back in Austin, come back to Texas for Mega Camp. We'll see you guys there. We'll make sure it's nice and warm for you. All right. Great. Sounds good. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye thank you.